Hello. Um, this is a brief introduction to sets. The learning goals for this video are that by the end you should know the definition of a set, you should be able to use some notation for describing sets, and you should know some of the really important examples of sets that we're going to use throughout the whole course. So let's start at the very, very beginning, okay, with a definition. A set is an unordered collection of elements. All right, so one of the first things, or one of the most important things you'll learn in this course is how to think. And in particular, how to think about definitions. So the first thing you should ask yourself whenever you see any definition is, give me an example of that. All right, so let's look at some examples of sets. Here's one example of a set, um, the set A, B, C. That's a set that has three elements. So the elements are between the curly braces, and here the elements are the letters A, B, and C. Because a set is unordered, it doesn't matter how I write the order of the elements. So I could write B, C, A, and that's the same exact set, all right? Um, a different set with three elements might be the set that contains the numbers, one, two, and three. And the things in a set don't have to be all the same type of thing. For example, I could have a set that contains the number one, the letter A, and the name, um, the name uh, Carol which is like a string of letters if you're a computer scientist, right? So that's a set that has three elements in it as well. It's just one of the elements has a slightly longer name than the other ones, okay? Um, sometimes there are sets where we either can't or don't want to write down all of the elements, but there's still sets. Like I, I might give a set like that a name. Like I might say S is the set of all current um, MHC login names or usernames, okay? There are over 2,400 current students. I wouldn't want to write all those down on the screen, but it's still a set and it's actually just a finite set. Um, here's an example of a set that I, I can't write down, where I can't write down all the elements because it's an infinite set. So I'll call this set L. And this set is the set of all points on the line with equation y equals x plus 1. Okay, so it's a set that I, I could draw a piece of that set, but I can't write down all of the elements because there are infinitely many of them. Okay, so that's what a set is. And um, the next thing on my list is some more notation for describing sets. Okay, so notation. All right, well, I already told you that the elements of a set, the things inside the set, go in between the curly braces. What else should we know? Well, let's give ourselves an example. So let's let X be the set containing the letters little a, little b, and here the set containing little c is an element. So this is a set with three elements, and one of them is just fancier than the other two. One of the elements is a set. Okay, so I might write, if I want to say um, that uh, a is an element of x in shorthand notation, what I'll write is a, so this is how it's read, a is an element of x. Um, if something is not, so like c, c is not an element of x, okay? Um, the set containing C is an element of X, but C is not itself an element of X. So I can just put a, a slash through that and I get 
C is not an element of X, but um, the set containing C, oops, what happened there? My screen share went off, but um, the set containing C is an element of X, okay? So that's a little bit more set notation. Um, and let's look at some important examples now. So very important examples. So the examples that I've shown you so far are important for our understanding, but they're just little made up examples, okay? They're not things that you have to remember for all times. The examples aren't the thing. What they show you, what you're thinking is the thing. These examples are important for all time. So the first one, a little bit ridiculous, it's the empty set. And this little ridiculous set that has nothing in it, so the empty set, um, will actually come up a lot. And it's kind of one of those things where you always forget about it, right? You forget about the empty set, but you have to think of it. And sometimes it's a special case of things and you have to exclude it or include it um, by name, okay? Um, what else is important? Well, the set of natural numbers. So n is equal to the set of natural numbers. And notice I put that extra bar on my n. That's called blackboard bold, okay? And this is, um, the natural numbers. And usually people think of the natural numbers as starting with one and just then they're the counting numbers. Sometimes people start the natural numbers at zero, okay? And I know that computer scientists like to start counting like start indexing things by zero. And so sometimes then you can, it's convenient to say the natural numbers start at zero. It's a choice. You just have to ask people what they're doing. Do your natural numbers start at zero or they start at one? Okay, other important sets. There's the set of integers. So um, the integers, and these, it's an infinite set, and it's all the counting numbers and their negatives and zero. So like, and it goes on forever. There are also the real numbers. So the real numbers, um, oops, like in calculus, that's the real number line, right? It's infinite and there are no holes in the real numbers. Um, there are the, the rational numbers, rational numbers. These are the um, numbers that have the form P over Q, where P and Q, I'm going to use our new notation, think what does that mean? P and Q are integers and Q can't be zero because we're dividing by it. Okay, um, so those I think are our most important our most important sets. And now that we have them, there's one more piece of set notation, set building notation, and it's called, aha, set builder notation. Okay, and it allows us to talk about special um, elements of sets like with special properties. For example, I might write down the following. So um, I might write down something like the X in R, so the X that are real numbers, and then in our book they put these a colon there, and we read this as such that, such, so the X's that are real numbers such that X squared is equal to one, okay? And so what goes on the, to the right of the colon is like the criteria or the condition that the things on the left have to meet to be part of my set. 
So here I look at all the real numbers and then I just take the ones whose square is one. And in this case, I could write the elements of this set. I could write them all down because I know it's just positive one and negative one. Um, but I could also say something like the natural numbers are the set of all m in z, so all the set of all m that are integers, such that m is greater than zero, right? And so here I could write every element of that set down, um, but that's a nice way of describing the natural numbers sort of without any words. Um, so anyway, this is our beginning video, and there is a short, um, you have a short online assignment before class to try to, um, for you to test yourself to see how well you've understood these definitions. And um, the important thing about that, about that assignment is not that you get them all right, is that you figure out what you really understand and what your questions are, okay? Because the real goal of this course is to help you learn how to think and help you learn how to know when you really know something and when you have questions and how to formulate your questions using really precise language. All right, I will see you in class. Bye-bye.